Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today let's talk about how to start a Dark Angels army in 10th edition of Warhammer 40k. Of course, I need to mention that this video is based on my own experience and how I will start a Dark Angels army right now. If your experience is different than mine and you think that there's a better way to start a Dark Angels army, please let me know in the comments because I'm very interested about your opinion. I would like to divide this video in different parts. First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about who are the Dark Angels because of course, if we are going to talk about how to start a Dark Angels army, we need to know who they are. Then, of course, we need to talk about the Dark Angels Combat Patrol because this is supposed to be the starting point for an army, so we need to address this boss. And after that, I would like to talk a little bit about the Dark Angels Codex as well. After that, I would like to mention which ones are, in my opinion, the miniatures that every single Dark Angels collection needs to have. And to finish the video, and based on everything that was said previously, I would like to talk about actually which type of miniatures or units we should try to get if we want to start a thematic Dark Angels army. So, who are the Dark Angels? Well, we know that the Dark Angels is one of the Space Marines loyalist chapters and they have the huge honor of being the first Space Marine Legion made by the Emperor. Their Primarch is Lionel Johnson, a Primarch that has its own miniatures, of course we will need to talk about this later. And the most common view of them is with their green power armor with red weapons. But they are truly unique, they are a really unique chapter and it's one of the most important chapters in the lore actually, so yes, we need to talk more about them because it's important to mention here that even if their, let's say, color skin is green with red weapons, they have two specific companies super popular that they have different color scheme. So they are so unique that even in the same chapter they have three different color schemes that's not usual at all. So we need to talk about the second company of the Dark Angels, we need to talk about the Ravenwing. They wear black power armor and they are everything about mobility and fast attack. And then we have the first company, also known as the Deathwing. They wear white bone power armor and they are more focused into power and strength. Actually, you can clearly see that they can deploy a lot of Terminator armor into the battlefield. As you can see, it's quite complex to decide how to start a Dark Angels army because we have three different types of color schemes, we have almost three different types of playstyle and that's actually what makes, makes them so unique. And it's at this point that we need to talk about the Dark Angels Combat Patrol. I already made a video talking about it and I shared everything that I like, everything that I dislike and also some opinions from the subscribers of the channel. So of course I'm going to leave the link in the description because I don't want to repeat the same. In this combat patrol we have one captain in Gravis armor, then we have two units of five intercessors or one big of ten that I don't recommend. And then we have one unit of five Hellblasters and we have a unit of three Blade Car Veterans. As I mentioned earlier, you can clearly see how the most generic Space Marines here, they are wearing green, while the Blade Car Veterans, as veterans, they are wearing the classic white bone armor. And finally, we have two upgrade sprues that will let us transform this uh, regular space marines into actual dark angel looking ones. Overall, I don't think that it's a bad start for a dark angel's army. I mean, as I said previously, we have three different playstyles or three different ways to focus on a dark angel's army. So by having so much basic or generic units in this box, I think that it's a nice start because we can get this combat patrol, we are going to get 
a nice range of miniatures and with that foundation we can start building our Dark Angels army into the theme that we like the most. But with the combat patrols it's always the same. If you want everything inside of the box then it's a very good deal. If you don't want everything inside the box then it's not the best deal. But in this case even if you don't want the captain for example because he's the most weird unit in the box as he doesn't have synergy with the rest of the units you are still going to save money on the rest of the things but if you only like one or two things from the box then maybe you should skip it and obviously we need to talk about the dark angels codex because I assume that if you're thinking about starting a Dark Angels army, at some point you will want to play with that army. And here is where you're going to find the specific rules for Dark Angels and their unique units. But before I continue, I have to mention that this is a codex supplement. So, if you want to play Dark Angels to the fullest, you will need to get as well the Space Marine Codex because in that Space Marine Codex is where we are going to find the, the data sheets and all the rules about the Space Marines faction. For example, the army rule of the Space Marines is the Oath of Moment. That's not present in the Dark Angels supplement. That's in the Space Marine Codex. And all the generic Space Marines, they are in the Space Marine Codex and all the other detachments, it's in the Space Marine Codex as well. So we are going to need two different books. Let's go back to the Dark Angels Codex because we need to talk about this one. In this codex we have three different Dark Angels detachments. We have one detachment that is a little bit more generic for the Dark Angels, but then we have one specific detachment for the Ravenwing that I mentioned earlier and a specific detachment for the Deathwing that I also mentioned earlier. And this not only affects the Dark Angels, if we play generic Space Marines painted as Dark Angels into the Dark Angels attachments, we need to have in mind that they are going to get extra keywords. For example, every single generic Space Marine that is mounted or has the keyword fly it will also get the keyword Ravenwing. And then all the veterans in the Space Marine Codex, the Dreadnoughts, the Repulsors, the Terminators, the Land Raiders, all of those, they are going to get the keyword Deathwing. At this point, you can clearly see how Games Workshop is uh, trying to lead us into several directions that it's quite nice actually. But even if we don't like these specific detachments, Dark Angels are Space Marines. They have access to their three detachments in their own codex and the seven Space Marines detachments. So we can choose between 10 detachments to play in whatever way that we want. This is fantastic, this is great, because at the end of the day we can choose exactly the playstyle that we enjoy the most. With all of that being said, I have to mention that uh, from my perspective there's a minimum of two specific Dark Angels miniatures that everyone that wants to have a Dark Angels collection needs to get sooner or later. I'm talking of course about Azrael, the chapter master of the Dark Angels, a super cool looking miniature. I mean, this one needs to be in every army. I mean, you don't have to play with it, but if you're collecting the Dark Angels, you should have the chapter master. And it's actually super cool, it looks fantastic. I think that it's a great addition. I also like the rules of this miniature, so I think that it's one that you should consider having sooner or later. And of course we need to talk about Lion L. Johnson. I think that it's such an awesome, cool looking miniature that if you're playing Dark Angels or you want to have a Dark Angels collection sooner or later, preferably sooner, you need to have this miniature because it, it's fantastic. I, 
If I'm starting on Warhammer, I mean, if I were starting, I will leave this miniature for the end because it's so full of detail and there's a lot of things in this miniature. So, of course, it needs to be treated like the best and you need to practice before going into this one. So, it, it's amazing. I mean, if you have a Primark in your specific army, you should go for it. Of course, there's a lot more of unique Dark Angel characters and units. You can check all of them in the Warhammer web store. They are fantastic, they look great, and I really like how they look. I mean, they, they look super unique, super Dark Angel, and I love them. But <laughs> I don't consider them a must-have at all costs. I think it depends more if they suit into your playstyle or you like how they look. For sure, at some point, if you are collecting Dark Angels, you should get all the unique miniatures. But, as I said, I consider the two previously the must-have, and these ones are the ones that you can get with time. And this is the moment that we have to ask ourselves the difficult question. With everything that I mentioned, how we start a Dark Angels army? From my perspective, we can start a Dark Angels army in three different ways. The first way is going to be the Deathwing, the first company. And actually, this one is quite interesting right now because the range of miniatures of the Deathwing had a nice refresh. We are going to have Belial, a fancy character. Belial is actually the captain of the first company, so of course it makes sense that we're going to have him there. He looks amazing, it's a fancy brand new miniature. Same with the Deathwing Knights, that they look fantastic as well. We can decide if to have them with the shields and the swords, or we can have alternative weapon. We can decide if they are going to have helmets, or if they are going to have these classic hoods. So it's kind of nice. We have different customization options there. We can even consider take two units of them and have different weapon loadouts and styles. That's always nice. Aside from that, we have the regular Terminators from the Space Marines, but Dark Angels, they have a specific fancy new upgrade sprue that it will allow them to make the Terminators more unique. So we have Belial, two different types of Deathwing Knights, then we have the classic Terminators with their upgrade sprue, and from here we can choose into the things that we want. We can go for all the types of veterans, we have uh, Vanguard veterans, Turn Guard veterans, Blade Guard veterans, but we don't have to focus into that only. We can have our Terminator base, then we can have some vehicles, and then we can complete the army with some generic Space Marines if we want. We also have the Inner Circle Companions that they look quite nice, I didn't mention them, and I actually like a lot this new unit. So this is one of the ways to focus into the creation of our army. It's quite interesting. I, I kind of like this one. I, I think that it's quite interesting. Another way, and this one is a little bit more tricky, is going to be try to focus into the Ravenwing. And I say that this is going to be a little bit more tricky because yes, the Deathwing had a nice refresh quite recently but the Ravenwing didn't get that yet because, for example, the Ravenwing Black Knights, they look fantastic, but they are old sculpts. The specific land speeder of the Ravenwing is also quite old. So we have miniatures that are older, they are old sculpts, and that means that sooner or later they are going to be replaced. That's why I don't really want to recommend this type of miniatures and if I wanted to have a Ravenwind army, maybe I would try to avoid these specific ones. I mean, of course, if I like how they look and I want to have them in game and play with them, I will go for them. But it's my personal opinion. One thing that can be done here is that, as I mentioned earlier, Every unit that flies and all the mounted miniatures, they will have the Ravenwind keyword. So we can try to focus into those ones. That's not that bad, but it's still a little bit less unique than the Deathwing, but it's an alternative. And 
as I said, this is just my opinion. You can do whatever you want and you can get the, the actual old uh, miniatures because they still look quite nice until today. I cannot wait for the Black Knights to be renewed, but they still look quite nice. And something else that we can do, and I'm going to consider this the third way, is going to have a more generic Dark Angels army or foundation and then try to add the things that we like for example we can have a mostly generic dark angels army but then add some i don't know we can add azrael we can add the lion or we can add uh, one unit of uh, deathwind knights we can add small things to a pre-established foundation of more generic space marines this is an option, especially if we would like to try different detachments than the ones that we can find in the Dark Angels uh, Codex. So it's always nice to have these kind of options to do whatever we want with our Space Marines. And of course, if we want to have a more generic Space Marine army, I actually think that the cheapest and easiest way to create a big Dark Angels army will be to try to combine the different Space Marine boxes where we can get uh, units in a discounted way like for example all the combat patrols so let's take a quick look at them Would I recommend the Space Marines combat patrol for the Dark Angels? No I mean, no, don't even think about that, this is not a nice combat patrol and I don't recommend it at all. Only think about this if you get this combat patrol in the starter set. In the starter set, it's quite nice, it's a good one, but by itself it's quite bad, don't, don't get it really. I mean, terminators always suit nicely into the dark angels because we can paint them with this bone armor and they will look very nice and the inferno squad is okay so we can get it if we get it from the starter sets then it's nice would i recommend this space wolves combat patrol for the dark angels no i mean we have 10 intercessors so we're going to have them in the dark angels combat patrol with things that maybe we can use much better than these ones here would I recommend this Death Watch Combat Patrol for the Dark Angels? No, not at all, never. Same issue as before, we have here 10 intercessors, if we want them, let's get them better in the Dark Angels Combat Patrol. Would I recommend this Black Templar Combat Patrol as Dark Angels? Uh, no. Uh, no, not at all, because actually this is a combat patrol that has chapter specific units like the Primaris Crusader Squad or the Marshal and big part of the value of this box is in the Black Templar's upgrade spruce. And we don't want to use any of those for the Dark Angels, so no, this one is definitely a no. Would I recommend this Blood Angels combat patrol to use them as Dark Angels? Actually, maybe it can work. I mean, really, it can work because there's nice synergy between these two boxes and the units that are inside. I mean, if we want to have a generic big army as a foundation and then add the nice things that we like, or we just have, or we just want to have variety of units, it's not that bad because let, let's think for it Let, let's think about it for a moment the captain in the dark angels combat patrol can lead the aggressors in the blood angels combat patrol and the librarian of the blood angels combat patrol can join the hell blasters in the dark angels combat patrol and we can even put the hell blasters and the librarian into the impulsor and the infiltrators are always nice it's uh, not that bad to have five more intercessors because having one unit is nice having two maybe it's more than enough but having three it's maybe too much but still it's a quite interesting foundation for an army and having a little bit more of intercessor bodies is never a bad idea I mean, it's not the most competitive or nicest uh, foundation for an army, but like this, we will have almost a thousand points, like 
half of the army so it's not that bad because then we can decide how to upgrade this one to be much more dark angel specific one and actually if to this that i said we add lionel johnson and maybe a repulsor executioner and maybe a lancer or any gladiator tank we have like the whole army already and, and we can do the same with uh, lionel johnson uh, ballistus dreadnought and redentor dreadnought and we again have like the whole army 2000 points so it's not a crazy idea if i had to start a dark angels army right now i will get the combat patrol and then I will try to expand it with the miniatures that I like. Something that I would like to mention about the Combat Patrol as well is that the Combat Patrol allows us to play Combat Patrol games. And if, for example, you are not used to play Warhammer 40k, this is a perfect way to get used to it because you can practice a lot. It's a quite easy, fun, quick games and you can get used with the rules. And after that, you can jump into the actual 2000 point battles. So how we start a Dark Angels army in 10th edition of Warhammer 40k? First, we need color scheme and we need to think about a theme for the army. Then we have to know that the combat patrol is very valid if we don't have miniatures in the box or if we want every single miniature in that box. To start playing we will need the Dark Angels Codex and the Space Marine Codex and then we will decide how to expand our army. Sooner or later we will need to have Lionel Johnson and Azrael. Then the fun begins because we can choose how to focus into our Dark Angels army. Do we want to start having fast attack and speed with the Ravenwing or we prefer to have a lot of Terminators and really tough units with the Deathwing? Or we can go in the middle point, have some generic Space Marines there and combine them with the units from the Deathwing or the Ravenwing. We can do whatever we want because we can mix and match and as I said earlier, we can choose from 10 different detachments. So there's not problem at all if we choose the miniatures and the playstyle that we like we paint them as dark angels and we play with them like if they were whatever other specific detachment of the space marines that's the best part of all so there's no problem at all if we choose the miniatures that we like the playstyle that we like we paint those space marines as dark, as dark angels and then we decide maybe to if we don't like the Ravenwing detachment, maybe we can use the detachment in the Space Marine book about the White Scars. We can do that, they are quite similar in terms of uh, speed and fast attack. So that's quite nice, we can do these kind of fun things and at the end of the day we just need to make an army that we like. My last suggestion will be to download the Warhammer 40k app. Because even if in this app we need to pay and buy the codex to actually check the rules of our army, we have access to the army building. So we can actually create a list of Dark Angels and we can decide the miniatures that we would like to have there. And it's always nicer to see the miniatures that we like, how many points they are going to be and how the list will look like. So it's a nice army building tool. And the most important part, have fun and enjoy your army as much as possible. And this is everything, this is the end of the video, so you can let me know in the comments how will you start a Dark Angels army or if you agree and disagree with me, because of course, as always, I care about your comments. So if you are still here, please consider giving me a like and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.